This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, sending some stories down the memory hole. We've got that deleted story, plus the swamp just keeps on filling. But first, thanks, Obama. Slavery returns to Africa as migrants sold in open markets in Libya. We grabbed this story via IB Times. Migrants from West Africa are being openly traded in public slave markets across Libya. Survivors have told the International Organization for Migration, IOM, how there are slave markets and private prisons all over Libya. Mohamed Abdekar, IOM's head of operations and emergencies, said the situation's dire. One survivor from Senegal spoke of how he was brought into a square where they were put up for sale. An IOM officer based in Niger said IOM Italy has confirmed that that story is similar to many other stories reported by migrants. The going rate for a migrant was between 200 and 500 American dollars each, with many forced into captivity for months before they were freed or sold onward. IOM has helped repatriate 1,500 people back to West Africa so far this year, where it's trying to inform people not to risk the journey to Libya where they face exploitation. Migrants who go to Libya while trying to get to Europe have no idea of the torture archipelago that awaits them just over the border, said Leonard Doyle, chief IOM spokesman in Geneva. There they become commodities to be bought, sold, and discarded when they have no more value. James, it's not even five years, really, since the toppling of Libya, and already this is the situation? Yes. Uh, In fact, it's been a mess since the very fall of Gaddafi, and uh, this is the kind of story that makes me sick to my stomach to see a country that was no utopia, it was no nirvana, um, and Gaddafi was no angel or saint descended from heaven, But Libya certainly was not the hellhole that it is now. And all the people who were crying crocodile tears, oh, won't someone save the poor little Libyan children? And oh, oh, the Libyan people are suffering from this brutal, oppressive tyrant, haven't written a single word about Libya since mission accomplished, Gaddafi's gone, we got our military objective I don't care about Libya anymore. And I'm not saying that just off the top of my head. I'm saying that advisedly. Look at someone like Nick Kristof, who wrote half a dozen editorials in 2011 alone, saying, oh, won't somebody bomb Libya? We need to bomb Libya. You have to go bomb Libya, guys. It's such a humanitarian disaster. The only way to save it is with our humanitarian love bombs. And since September 7th, 2011, want to guess how many columns Nick Kristof has devoted to Libya? Precisely zero. Not one word. They don't care about the people they're claiming they're trying to save with these humanitarian love bombings. So let's transpose that six years forward to 2017. Does that remind you of any situations going on right now? Oh, that's right. Oh, we have to save the Syrian people from Assad, who obviously chemical weaponed his own people on the eve of the peace talks. There's no question about it, although we have zero proof of that whatsoever, and you shouldn't ask for any, and if you do, you're a Russian agent who deserves to go to hell. Uh, And, oh, we care so much about the Syrian children. And as soon as Assad is toppled, want to guess how many many columns people like Nick Kristof are going to devote to the Syrian people and their ongoing struggles as they descend into this type of nightmare chaos that Libya is in? I'm going to guess zero. What do you think? It's crocodile tears, and it makes me sick to my stomach that these hypocrites continue to get away with propagating this this vile, disgusting nonsense about this humanitarian love bombings. James, it was, I guess, still kind of a developing story when you and I were taping New World Next Week last week, hence no inclusion of the Syrian gas attack in last week's New World Next Week episode. But that's that's what I was thinking, just as you were heading into that area. Nick Kristof can't write articles about Libya. They're probably all writing articles about Syria, as, again, the agenda rolls forward. And we'll illustrate yet again how the agenda rolls forward, even though the faces and the R's and the D's might change every four to eight years, with our second story on this episode 306 for New World Next Week. For April 13th, 2017, Sessions orders DOJ to end Forensic Science Commission and suspend the review policy. We take this via the Washington Compost, a.k.a. Democracy Dies in Darkness Daily. 
Attorney General Jeff Sessions will end a Justice Department partnership with independent scientists to raise forensic science standards and has suspended an expanded review of FBI testimony across several techniques that have come under question, saying a new strategy will be set by an in-house team of law enforcement advisors. In a statement this past Monday, April 10th, Sessions said he would not renew the National Commission on Forensic Science, a roughly 30-member advisory panel of scientists, judges, crime lab leaders, prosecutors, and defense lawyers chartered by the Obama administration in 2013. A path to meet needs of overburdened crime labs will be set by a yet-to-be-named senior forensic advisor and an internal department crime task force, Sessions' statement said. The announcement came as the commission began its last two-day meeting before its term ends, coming up on April 23rd, and as some of its most far-reaching final recommendations remained hanging before the department, so to speak. We've talked a lot in the past of New World Next Week I, I didn't dig fully back into the archives. I went back as far as July 2014, where we talked about FBI crime lab unit rife with flawed forensics. And just several weeks ago, back in February of this year, 2017, man wrongly convicted with bite mark evidence confronts bite mark analysts. So on the one hand, this seems like an entirely kind of wrecked procedure that maybe it should be all thrown up in the air. James, I don't know that we're really cheering the latest moves from Sessions. Uh, well, I'm not cheering this in the sense that uh, what this what this portends about where where they're going with it. But uh, you're right; we have covered this a lot. I've been covering it since 2012 when I interviewed Dr. Frederick Whitehurst, who was uh, formerly the uh, the head of the uh, the FBI crime lab and was blowing the whistle on it. Uh, I've also written editorials about it. Four ways the crime uh, the crime lab can frame you. So I've been covering this story for a while and. Uh, I think that the uh, the the bedrock of this, um, I mean, obviously, no a government appointed Justice Department panel is going to you know put an end to this shenanigans at, at the the FBI crime lab because they want that in place. They want it there to frame you. So whether that exists or doesn't exist, I think they're still going to c continue framing people as they wish using faulty evidence that they know is faulty and that they'll never uh, question in court. They just present it as uh, a fait accompli. Oh, it's bite marks. How can you, you know, science, science, guys, it can't be wrong. Oh, except when the scientists say it's it's wrong, but uh, let's not talk about that. So uh, again, all of this is just a big charade and it it's just there to frame you. And I just will come back to what I always come back to with this issue. When and if and as they are starting to roll out the DHS and the TSA and the other instruments, uh, the alphabet soup instruments of the agents of power, roll out their various technological gugads to peer into your heart and soul and detect, you know, what you're planning to do based on your furtive eye movements at the airport or whatever kind of nonsense technology they're starting to, to try to hype. It is quackery. It is fraud. They're going to roll it out and make you believe in it so that you believe they can really detect behaviors and, oh, they can really, oh, this computer tells us you're going to do this or that, so let's lock you up. And people will go along with it, just as they went along with polygraphs and bite marks and hair analysis and all of this other stuff that has been proven to be fraudulent nonsense that is just used to frame people and they're going to continue doing it as long as they get away with it and uh yeah no the answer isn't going to come from any sort of special justice department uh, program to you know look into it but uh, i think people should be aware of the issue and aware just how shoddy that a lot of the science that's presented in court actually is so we will include all of that in the show notes, just like we include everything we say and mention always down in the show notes to do more research for yourself. If you'll indulge me for a moment, just one really breaking kind of update I wanted to add into here, just to kind of illustrate the swamp filling that we've been talking about. Zero Heads just posted a story just an hour or so ago. Trump flips on five key campaign promises in under 24 hours. So the Trump truth train now says that the dollar is getting too strong. China's not a currency manipulator. He now likes and respects Janet Yellen. The Export-Import Bank is now a very good thing. And last, but certainly not least, NATO is no longer obsolete. So those are your Trump truth train updates. We will continue to give you those updates as necessary. And we move to our third and final story this week in a bit of spring cleaning, perhaps. The Daily Mail deleted a 2013 article about a plan to blame the Syrian gas attacks on Assad. 
Now, not the Syrian gas attacks, it was just hypothetical Syrian gas attacks. Back in 2013, reading from this now deleted Daily Mail article, and again, it's really tough to fully delete anything anymore on the web, and you can get it through the Wayback Machine on archive.org, and it wrote, Leaked emails have allegedly proved that the White House gave the green light to a chemical weapons attack in Syria that could be blamed on Assad's regime and in turn spur international military action in the devastated country. A report released contains an email exchange between two senior officials at British-based contractor Britain Defense, where a scheme approved by Washington is outlined explaining that Qatar would fund rebel forces in Syria to use chemical weapons. Barack Obama made it clear to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad last month that the U.S. would not tolerate Syria using chemical weapons against its own people. And you make it to the fourth sentence of this now-deleted article from the Daily Mail, and they got this entire story from where, James? Infowars. So why did they delete it now? They didn't. That's the first error in this reporting that's going around in the alt media. They didn't delete it now. They deleted it four years ago in 2013. So people who are saying, they just deleted this article, guys, are making that up. They're lying to you. And that's not all they're lying about. This article was fake news. And uh, there's different layers and levels to this. One is that the reason that they deleted it four years ago is because they were sued successfully by Britain Defense for £100,000 and had to pay that out um, over this story because they, they admitted in court that the documents that they are presenting here are fake. So that's the first level of this story. The second level is that even the alt media, I mean, it's not just that the Daily Mail, you know, pulled the story because they got sued for 100,000 pounds. It's that even the alt media was all over this at the time, or at least certain elements of it were. Uh, Storm Clouds Gathering had a good video. The leaked Britain defense emails are fake. Don't fall for it. Uh, and SOTT.net, uh, Joe Quinn had an article, Syria, Chemical Weapons, and the Burnham Defense Emails, where he also comes to the conclusion, yep, those emails are fake. Don't fall for it. And yet here we are four years later, and everyone's drudging it up again without question and without any of that historical evidence or, or looking into it. Just, oh, look, Daily Mail just deleted this article. So this is fake news from the alt media that's propagated by the alt media and it's disgraceful to see it pro propagated so unquestioningly and uh, as i say I'll, I'll throw the links into all of those things so people can drudge through this but these are th these are fake things and the only thing that i mean if i were conspiratorial minded i would say why didn't daily mail as usually happens in these things why don't they publish a, a retraction disclaimer at the top of the article leave the article there and say retraction we you know these these emails have proven to be fraudulent blah 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 whatever that's the way it's usually done you don't take it off the web that only brings more attention to it especially in times like this as we're seeing now so it's almost as if they want to you know, hey, hey, alt media, here's some red meat for you. Hey, look at this email that we tried to scrub from the web, but oh, you know, there's the Wayback Machine, so I guess we can't get it off the web. Oh, shucks. I mean, it's so bizarre the way that happens and the way it's now being, you know, bandied around but the alt media unquestioningly, which is pretty disgraceful. If only there was some organization to come along and tell us what was real news and fake news, like, I don't know, like PolitiFact, which, did you know, they just retracted their earlier claim that yes, Assad, Assad, one hundred percent, God got the chemical weapons out. That, you know, it's a done deal. They they call that mostly true back in two thousand fourteen, but just this past week, after the you know they oh, oh oh wait okay, there's a chemical weapons attack. We're blaming it on Assad. I guess he must have had chemical weapons. So now they're retracting that earlier claim. So the fact checkers are now saying, yeah, we were wrong. Now, what does that mean if people start basing, I don't know, Google search results off of these fact-checking organizations? James, do you have any follow-up to that? <laughs> I, I just so happen to have a little bit of a related follow-up for that. Google adds fact-check flag to their search results now. They rolled it out to their news search results back in October, which was just, just short of the stunning conclusion of America's Next Top President, but now they've added it just to their regular search results. And again, I'll include the links to show you exactly what they're doing and what it's going to say and what it isn't going to say, but I don't know, James, in a lot of ways, I think with our New World Next Week episodes, we're sort of, we're, we are doing the news of the future. 
we lay it down here and then one, two, three, five years later, we were able to say, hey, <laughs> I don't know. It just gets it gets a little it gets a little ridiculous sometimes. And it sometimes leaves us with the need for a little bit of good news. I published the latest episode of Good News next week. Earlier this week, West Virginia weed for the win, my home state. It becomes the 29th state here in America to go for medical marijuana and also industrial hemp. So a little bit of West Virginia weed news as well as glyphosate-free lemonade and more ways that we are winning and some solutions-oriented stories from Good News Next Week. So as we wrap up this New World Next Week episode, I will again remind everybody that our work is completely independent and non-commercial and you've never seen an ad, you've never seen any advertisements or overlays or endorsements or any of that kind of stuff. We are completely listener supported. James, my my AdSense isn't working. I get emails from Google it's like, hey, you, you know, your AdSense is messed up. You're, you gotta you gotta fix that if you want monetize. I, I don't want monetize. Not by you guys. I don't. So we are listener supported. You can find all our links. We'll include those down below. Patreon being a great way to do that, James. Well, here we will continue doing the new world of next week or next year or next decade, depending on uh, where, how long these stories uh, take to come to fruition. But at any rate, we'll continue doing this work. Thank you for d digging up all this data again today, James. Appreciate it, buddy. Take care. <laughs>